like to welcome you to the sixth virtual event by Intelligenis, the Conversational AI and Experience Summit. We'd like to thank our platinum sponsors, eBot7, CSG, Casito, and Quantify. Gold sponsors, AutoMaze and Open Dialogue, and media partners, the FinTech Power 50, the FinTech Times, and FinTech Now. Our first speaker is Dr. Mark Tomlinson, someone that I, I do know. He's the CTO and co-founder at Neener Analytics. And in full disclosure, there was a, the slot was, was uh, occupied by someone who took ill. Uh, Mark volunteered at the last minute to jump in on this and, uh, and save the day. So thanks. Thanks, Mark. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Mark, top scientist in the world working on complex problems in natural language understanding and modeling social relations and understanding how much people really want something. His focus is on building end-to-end -end systems for understanding behavior based on psychological factors, metaphors, social relations, and communication style, and the individual's level of motivation based on their culture, personality, and interactions. Mark built the core tech for the U.S. government in detecting online terror plots or terror plots online through social media. If you want to know where the bad guys out there are reduced to random acts of terror or smaller scale insurgency, um, thank, thank Mark. They can't do long range, long scale plan, large scale planning anymore using social networks anymore because that's where they used to do it. The stuff he built understands the cell hierarchy based on their communications, no matter how hard they try to hide it. And the good guys remove those persons from the equation and the plot evaporates. I've said this uh, many, many times. Let's be frank. There's like four guys like Mark on the planet. So, Mark, if you got your mic on and your uh, video going, it's yours. Okay. Uh, can everybody hear me all right? Um, so I'm going to take over the screen here. And... So I've geared this presentation to be a little bit more of an intro and thought piece into what chatbots are versus what they can be. Um, we're interested in getting beyond um, what everybody's seeing when they when they think of chatbots right now. Um, so a lot of times, right, when when we think about chatbots, we're we're really just talking about these conversational replacement aids, right? They're they're replacing that customer service representative. Um, they most of you have probably used them right now in your process, right? I've used one filling out my taxes with H&R Block um, last week. Um, they're basically everywhere now. Um, so their general purpose, right, is just to replace that customer service representative, right? They're to replace that online web form that we used to fill out. Um, and, and you can really think about them uh, let me put this in presentation mode. Um, really think about them in terms of this communication evolution, right? So it used to be that, that communications were, were person to person, right? Your, your customer came into the store. If anybody remembers doing that before the pandemic hit, right? We used to have these things called stores that you could go to and you could talk to people um, and actually interact with those people. And, and, you know, if you came from a small town or if you went there often enough, right, they knew your name. They knew who you were. You didn't need to go in um, letting them know what your intention was, right? Because they understood it because they knew who you were. Um, that has kind of all moved onto the web, right? For a little while in the in the 2000s, right? It was all this these shopping carts, this, you know, the Amazon took over, right? And all of that experience moved online and it moved into this form that you had to fill out in order to buy something to register, right? There's no interaction there. There's nothing about you. It's just this little blank box and this little shopping cart. Um, it's really efficient. I mean, it's really nice, but the problem is that it's so sterile, right? There's what incentivizes a customer to, to fill anything out. Um, it's just full of sterility and abandonment, right? So now we've kind of come into this idea of a, of a chatbot, right? Where where now there's a communication going on between the individual and, um, and your business, right? So in order to um, carry on this conversation, right? Like the one we've got here using this flower shop as an example, um, 
All right, so so your customer might come to your chatbot and say, "Hey, I'd like to purchase some flowers for my wife." And you know, sure, I'd I'd, I'd love to help your your order some um, what type, and they're for our birthday. What do you suggest? All right, so so this is a type of conversation that one might see. And and in order to do this, the chatbot needs to understand some things about your business, right? It needs to understand the individual's intention, right? So when it, when they come in and they say purchase, right, that needs to know, okay, that's a that's a purchase intent. This is what the individual is trying to do, right? So your bot is taking orders. Um, and some of these intents can themselves be other intents, right? So we can actually nest these, right? This purchase intent could be a, a product selection intent, right? Where maybe, um, and then it's going to turn into a delivery, right? So maybe your body even wants to be able to suggest different products when they, um, uh, when the customer asks for suggestions or, or maybe returns, right? Can you, can you return flowers? Um, so, so that's one half of the equation. And then the other half that, that the bot needs to understand, right? Are these things called entities or slots, right? So each of these intents like purchase or product selection or delivery, right? has a series of, of entities or slots that need to be filled in order to, to make that happen, right? So for a purchase event, you need to know, the name of the arrangement, the quantity, maybe the customer's name, right? Who's, who's purchasing it. For product selection, um, I guess, arrangement names. Do flowers come, they have names for the arrangements, right? Um, and a bot needs to understand all of that, right? And, and maybe these are associated with occasions, right? Or maybe labels like the modern arrangement um, and things like filling out address. So to, to demonstrate this, I actually chose the flower domain for a really specific reason, right? Because I, I, I doubt anybody out there is actually um, a florist and has a floral business. Um, if you do this, that's really neat. Um, but, but the thing is, is, is you can look at this, right? And think about how complicated it is for a bot who's um, kind of general world knowledge, right? To actually go into a new domain and identify, you know, what are, what are the intents between my, my customers and my business, right? What are all those verbs? And, and what are all those slots that need to be filled? Right, so, so you can kind of look at this from the, from the bot's perspective almost um, as an outsider looking into this domain. Um, and now, you know, imagine we take this to, to something more likely, right? Like, like a FinTech, right? Like a finance domain, right? And if you're a banker, right? Your, your bot needs to know to be able to discriminate between, you know, five one arms and, and 30 year fixed mortgages or, or what about the difference between like put and call options, right? So that's something that's even difficult for a lot of people um, to understand the nuances of all those differences between um, the different uh, products that are available in a particular space. Um, so it, it makes it even harder for a bot. Um, so the, you know, the people that are out there working, working in this field and advancing the, the state of technology in this area, um, props, props to them, they're doing some really cool stuff. Um, and, um, but, and the, the benefit behind all this, right, is, is about scale, right? You're able to take, um, instead of having 100,000 customer service representatives, you can now replace them with bots. You can now address that crowd during the day 24 seven, right? You can address that crowd during the day. You can address that crowd at night, right? You can scale up your business to take all of those orders. Um, and, all of this is a really arduous process, right? But for, for a business, um, it can actually be really beneficial in some ways because it actually forces them to look at their business model, right? Understand what it is that they're selling, understand what it is that they're offering, understand what it is that their customer wants. And they formalize that, right? When they create a bot. So there are also a lot of companies that are um, creating methods to facilitate this formalization. Um, and again, some really neat technology um, coming out of that. And I actually wanted to wanted to highlight here to show you what I think is is kind of one of the, the best examples of this um, this type of bot, right? So I think the the Lemonade Insurance bot here, um, call her Maya, right, has has really epitomized this idea of replacing the the customer service representative to facilitate generation of a product, right? You can literally apply for insurance in ninety seconds, right? And the bot does this through a combination of um, structured and unstructured input, right? Prompting you to help you understand what you need to tell it, which reduces the number of things that it needs to understand. 
Um, and this is really a neat product, but, but the problem is, right, while, um, while it is able to sell insurance in 90 seconds, right, we, we've lost something along the way. Right, so the bot, this this evolution, right, forgot everything on the left hand side. It's it's just this really a reimagining of the person web interaction, right? It's it's still just a form that you fill out with no notion of who the individual is behind the form, right? We we we've lost everything, um, and I and I think that's one of the one, one of the most important parts is that interaction um, between your, your customer and, and you, because it's, that's where you build the loyalty, right? You're, you, you've almost, with, with this lemonade bot, right? You, you've almost optimized yourself out of the equation, right? You've, you've made it so easy to buy insurance that why are they going to buy it from you, right? Because now I can buy it anywhere in 90 seconds, right? I'm, I'm gonna go to whoever's cheapest. That's the only thing that matters, right? And not every not every company out there can afford to to play in that race to the bottom, right? We're not all the Amazons of the world that can operate on razor thin margins, right? We're companies that actually need to need to have loyalty, that need to uh, develop that sense of loyalty, and and understand who our customer is, um, and use that to facilitate our our process. Um, and so to uh, to show you about this this other type of bot, um, I'm going to uh, switch to a, a brief video here. Um, and forgive the quality. Um, so this uh, video was um, was created in 1966 um, at the same time that that this bot was created. Um, so when you talk about you know technology and kind of what um, what people can do with it, this, this type of bot that I'm talking about is actually what was the idea behind chatbots. So what Eliza does that's different than, than other bots, right, is it actually tries to engage people in conversation, right? Um, and, and what's really neat about this is it actually, uh, when, when looking at bot development from a, a natural language processing perspective, right, all the, all the other stuff that you do in that form-based bot, right, entity recognition, event recognition, question answering, Right, you don't evaluate a bot based on that. Those are all their own subdomains in the field of natural language processing. Right, when we look at you know how good is a bot, right, we're really wondering how long can it keep our customer engaged in conversation, and it does this by asking questions. Right, it does this by getting to know who that person is. Um, so this is the same type of technology that we're actually using in, in Niner's bot Aria, um, where the idea is getting to know that individual. Um, and, and what we want to do, right, is, is take it back to that, that small town feel, right, where you actually know your customer, right? We, at Neener Analytics, we like to use an example of, of, you know, when my grandfather walked into to a bank to get his first loan, right? The, and, and it's that bank there in the upper right-hand corner, right? The, the banker actually knew him. Right, he probably had to just hand over like a four by six index card with a little bit of information on it. Right, the, the banker knew who he was, knew where he lived. He probably drove by the house that he was going to buy every day on his way to the office. And it's right around the corner, right? And it's that type of community that, that we can get back to by understanding who your customer is. And, and I don't think I really need to sell the, the value proposition there, right? Like imagine if you already know what your customer wants before they even come into the building, right? If you understand who they are, understand what they're looking for, and you don't, you don't need to say, um, you know, if, if you're a flower seller, right? What if, what if you know your customer's already getting married? Um, and not in a scary way, 
but but in a in a good way, right? Where you actually have a sense of community, and the customer understands that they've communicated that to you um, at a previous time, so that that conversation is natural. Um, and I think you know a great example of of this is is coming up right now. So appearing on uh, on Netflix next week actually is a movie about the last blockbuster. Um, so this is pretty interesting timing, right? So Blockbuster had had the business model, right? They they had that that video store where where people liked to to go to the store and and their um, salespeople knew their customers, right? They could help them pick out videos. Um, Netflix moved with the time, right, and created a um, an online instant access um, type perspective. Uh, with a recommender system that you know kind of sort of works right but but when i've turned on netflix i'm actually not interested in most of the shows that are up there um while they get close right they they still don't understand who i am um and imagine if through that conversation with the bot netflix could actually understand you right um and this this type of repetition of you know businesses taking over businesses is just going to continue and and soon um, with the right bot technology right with the right understanding of your customer um, the next player in this space can actually come in and supplant Netflix just like they supplanted uh, supplanted Blockbuster. Um, so thank you very much. Um, I hope I whetted your appetite uh, for all the great talks that are going to come up um, afterwards. And I'll take any questions. Yeah, thanks, Mark. That was uh, it's, that's really cool stuff. Um, one of the thing, one of the things that I find uh, that sometimes gets lost in these types of conversations is is the difference using AI for intent, moving beyond uh, moving beyond keywords and key phrases you know, true AI, right? As opposed to a machine learning engagement. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things that you um, you see in a lot of the intent recognition, right? So, so Lemonade through the use of forms actually sidesteps that problem um, where things are too difficult, right? They actually make it so that they limit human interaction to be within the understanding of the, of the bot. Um, but one of the things that you see in these more conversational bots, right, is that you, the bot doesn't actually always need to have the right answer, right? But it needs to be able to act in a way that is reasonable and um, like what a person would do uh, in that situation, right? We don't know everything about every domain. Um, so it's, it's not just about having perfect NLP. Um, it's also about really understanding how human interactions work, understanding how the, the ebb and flow of, of communications understanding the relationship between the the customer service person and the the um, the client right right and isn't it and about understanding the institutions involved in those types of engagements yeah I mean I think the um, having that that good formal notion of, of your institution certainly helps the the classic bots um, and any sort of, of bot that is doing that, that kind of um, customer service end, right, needs to have that, that formalized knowledge of how your institution works. Um, and, and I think it really is a boon for both the bot and the business because, you know, you have to develop that flow, you have to understand stuff um, and you have to make it work together. Right, right. I've got a question here uh, from the audience. Do you think that there are intersections to advise nutrition with bots based on health data, for example, collected over wearables? Um, yeah, so the, the, the bots, and, and when you look at from a psychological perspective, right, there are a lot of bots that are coming out now, and um, some of them are even getting FDA approval or, or going the route for FDA approval for actually doing um, medical related like therapy um, or, you know, nutritional analysis, right? Where, um, but, but it does kind of question, right? The, the type of bot that you need isn't necessarily this, the, the chat bot that you get in the little right-hand corner of your webpage when you're navigating, right? This, this bot um, might, 
um, have a, a more ephemeral perspective where where it is just a series of reminders and um, small interactions, small nudges, um, as opposed to you know a full fledged conversation, um, right? And it's important to to know for your field, right? What types of interactions are people going to allow and and be respectful of, um, and what types of interactions are going to be off putting, um, right? You don't want somebody telling you you know waking up in the morning and and telling you you're fat, right? That's not very motivating. Right. Uh, yeah, one of the comments it seems like ordering a prescription refill would be perfect for this. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, when when you're talking about the, you know, um, supplanting that form, there's uh, the bots. The bots that are out there today definitely have a, a really good grasp. On, on getting that information and you know completing those applications in 90 seconds or less, um, filling in those prescription forms. Um, now of course, reading a prescription form that's that's a totally different matter. Um, I think the handwriting text has a little ways to go. A little different science, but using this to refill prescriptions, um, th that that uh, d seems to me, and I'll throw this out there, um, seems to me the difference between machine learning and, and AI. Um, it's a, um, it's a pretty, certainly absolutely a, a chat bot, a true chat bot performing a more mechanical, um, interaction with the consumer to save time versus a unique understanding of that, of that individual, uh, that, that, that next, that next step would be the diagnosis, right? Of. Yeah. Yeah. And the great thing about refills is. It gets you, it sidesteps a lot of the issues that you do need a pharmacist for. So a lot of times pharmacists do have that, that secondary role though of, you know, validating prescription, um, making sure there aren't any drug interactions. Um, so those sorts, sorts of things are still really important. Um, and, and when you're building a bot for, for that type of domain, right, it's, it's important that you still have those checks in there. Um, and I, I don't know, I, I'm not... 100% confident that all of the um, automation, all of the AI is there yet to um, make sure that those cross checks are done in a way that um, is, you know, going to make sure that everybody's all right. Um, yeah. But I, but I think it's, it's something that's just a couple of years away. Um, and we've got to start planning for that today, right? If you actually want to have that implemented when um, that technology is, is there, because right now the, the pace of technology and NLP is, is just, astronomical yeah and i think that, that sometimes that's lost on uh most most people yeah, it's, i mean it's incredible how fast the field is um advancing here in the past uh, couple yeah, of years and to use your blockbuster your blockbuster example uh the other side to that is uh blockbuster you know the, the blockbuster the the company that had a working model the business worked scaled gigantic, had buildings, had people, had videos, had parking. People were parking, coming in, picking up the, <clears throat> and leaving with maybe the, the guy at the counter who maybe knew them because it was a, the local blockbuster. Uh, they had a working model and they were destroyed in a year. So uh, I think maybe leaving the audience with, uh, with this idea that uh, because it's working today, it can unravel very, very quickly if you're not moving to that next evolution, uh, especially when you're talking about Gen Ys and Gen Zs. Yeah, exactly. Your thoughts yeah. to close it out. Now, um, I think that is with the with the pace of technology and in the fact that there are so many, you know, Amazons out there now. Um, it's important that you're differentiating yourself based on your understanding of your customer, right? We, we need to start understanding loyalty um, because millennials don't have any, um, I mean, they don't have any with companies, right? Um, lots of loyalty elsewhere. And you, you need to work on building up uh, those rapports in other ways and actually understanding who your customer is um, so that you can differentiate yourself. Uh, otherwise, you're uh, not going not gonna to keep up. And they've all, and the consumer's gotten really, really good 
at uh, understanding if they're talking to a uh, a keyword based machine <laughs> that they can punk easily versus uh, an authentic AI that's having a conversation with them. Yeah, well, um, thank you all very much.